Once again, hello and welcome uh, people of Svienna. Great to have you in your office today. Um, happy anniversary to Svienna. I heard it's the one year anniversary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, very much looking forward to the talks already. And yeah, just very briefly before we get started with the actual talks, um, I'm just gonna tell you what um, yeah, Century is basically, and um, yeah. Uh, just briefly before that, my name is Lukas. I work at Sentry here for about one and a half years by now. Um, I mostly work on the JavaScript SDKs. So together with the front-end SDK team, I take care of maintaining um, a few, I think it's 15 or something like that, JavaScript SDKs that we have. For example, Angular React, but also more recently um, Svelte and SvelteKit. So yeah, what is Sentry all about? We are a um, application monitoring uh, product. So we started out with errors, basically meaning we catch errors that happen on your user's devices. We gather as much information as possible about them, and then we send them to Sentry so that you can take a look as a developer and see what caused the error, how we got, how they got there, and uh, ideally how to fix it uh, quickly. Uh, more recently, we also started performance monitoring um, so that you can basically identify which parts of your app might be a little bit slower and might need to be sped up a little. And then also um, very recently, we started out with session replay and with other products, products like um, cron job monitoring or uh, profiling. So yeah, a few uh, application monitoring products all along. Um, very important, we are open source, so you can just go to our GitHub repositories and basically everything we do is out in the open and we really love working together with the community of various platforms and frameworks and whatever. Sentry is basically free, so you can self-host it, um, just install the entire application uh, on your servers, or if you don't like the hassle of that and the countless hours of maintaining these things, you can decide to give us a little bit of your money and we are going to take care of that for you. Yeah, this is just a small overview of a portion of the um, frameworks and uh, languages that we support. Um, you can see here a few JavaScript ones, um, a lot of the backend frameworks as well in different languages like Java, PHP, Python, you name it basically. Um, also some mobile applications and uh, platforms like Android, iOS, Flutter, um, yeah all this good stuff, this good stuff, and also some gaming engines, like for example, Unity. Uh, yeah, so since we're here today to talk about Svelte, I figured let's just quickly take a look at how to use uh, Sentry in a SvelteKit application. Um, this is basically our newest SDK, so we just released this a few weeks ago, basically. And it's super easy to get started. You just uh, run our Sentry wizard to um, install the SDK, and the wizard will take care of downloading the SvelteKit package. It will log you into Sentry to connect your local project with a Sentry project. And then it will take care of um, actually initializing the project. So um, it will add some code to your files. So how does this look? On the client side, um, we use the client hooks provided by SvelteKit. We initialize the SDK first, um, give it some options, like for example, a DSN to tell Sentry, uh, to, yeah, to tell the SDK basically where to send uh, all the data to. Then um, yeah, you can add some other options to it. Uh, like, for example, our session replay integration. And uh, we also use certain uh, hooks provided by SvelteKit, such as the handle error hook on the client. Oh, hello. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's basically all the code you need for um, getting it run on the client. Um, even less code on the server, basically. Um, we, we use a few more of um, SvelteKit's hooks, like, for example, also the request handler, which is uh, super awesome. And as the last part, we also have a Vite plugin that you install to your, um, to your Vite config. Um, it's this Sentry SvelteKit plugin. Um, you can use this to add some more of our auto instrumentation to um, your SvelteKit application. So this will um, bring performance monitoring um, to all your load functions, for example, but you don't have to configure them individually. And uh, you can also use it to upload source maps automatically to SvelteKit. Uh, so, sorry, to Sentry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's basically it. Um, just a few lines of code. Then you deploy your application to wherever you host it. And soon afterwards, probably some kind of issues are going to appear, assuming we're not perfect pro uh, developers. And yeah, this is basically just a list of issues as they come uh, to Sentry. And we can take a look at one of them now. So here we can see the kind of error, 
um, where it happened on Chrome, on Mac OS, um, some additional metadata basically, um, for example, I think the user data should be somewhere in here. Um, and yeah, we can also take then a look at the stack trace. Um, important to point out here, this is the already unminified stack trace. So you can, I uh, previously said you upload source maps to Sentry. So we basically take care of unminifying your minified code that you ship to your client. And we try to give you um, the exact location where the actual, er the actual error happened in your code. Uh, yeah, then you will get some more context around what happened before the error was uh, thrown. So for example, breadcrumbs here that show a navigation event, then the user clicked something, then X an XHR request went out. Um, we have some additional um, statistics where these errors um, occur most frequently. And yeah, basically just as much data and information as possible for you, for developers, to um, yeah, find out why this error happened and how to fix it. With performance uh, monitoring, um, we try to basically, for example, for browsers or for web applications, we give you um, web vitals, so LCP, for example, or FCP, and we collect these values over time so that you can see how well your app performs on your actual client's devices. So um, not like if you would run it on Lighthouse, where it basically runs on your device, mostly under good conditions or um, under simulated bad conditions, but on your actual user's devices and to see how your apps perform there. Uh, yeah, so in a more in a greater detail um, in the performance uh, product, you can also um, take a look at actual traces, meaning you can check if you have a page load, for example, here, um, you can check what happened. So first a few uh, browser requests, then some resources were loaded. And yeah, later on, um, I think a little underneath here, some um, other requests happened basically. And the good thing is here, you can also connect this basically to your entire application stack via distributed tracing. So you can also see um, which kind of API requests, for example, were triggered from your front end, from your browser. Um, here, the, a few went to a uh, Django application in the back end, and then that application again made some database calls. And you really see what actually uh, might be causing here um, some sort of performance problem, like a slow query or N plus one queries, something like that. Cool. Uh, yeah, as I said uh, already, uh, we basically started out with session replay a few uh, months ago. So this is kind of our uh, newest shining feature on the front end side. And uh, the idea here is to provide a video like session of um, a user session that you can really see how your users experience, the session, uh, uh, experience your web application firsthand. And how do we get this to work? It's basically just three lines of code. As I said earlier already, you have you add the replay integration first, you give it a sample rate so that you basically tell the SDK how many of all user sessions that happens happen should actually be recorded and sent to Sentry. Um, yeah, just those three lines, we deploy our app again. And let's just pretend this is an actual session. This is one of our colleagues navigating the Sentry UI. We can see um, they make a few clicks here, they navigate through different, different tabs here. And let's take a look how this replay uh, how this looks as a replay. So here we can see basically the video player. Um, this shows us that session that we just watched. Um, we took great care of basically being privacy first. So all the text, for example, is redacted by default and you can opt in then to the things that are safe so that we don't expose any um, customer or client data by accident. And some additional stuff here as well, like for example, breadcrumbs or uh, uh, overview basically a condensed timeline into uh, the user session. And yeah, that's basically already it. Thank you very much uh, for having us. And one last request since I actually work on this Velkit SDKs. Um, if you guys by chance have already used them or if you're planning to use them, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're always very keen on get, um, getting feedback, uh, always happy to um, respond to some GitHub issues or on our Discord, whatever you prefer. And yeah, thank you. Thank you.